This episode of That's Not the Finish has been powered by Bodyslam.net. You are listening to That's Not the Finish Podcast, a no holds barred pro wrestling podcast perfect for getting your wrestling fix. Now get ready to call for the three count. One, two, three. And try not to get DQ'd. Because here are your hosts. Welcome to another episode of the That's Not the Finish Podcast. So for today's episode, we are going to have a little recap of the Royal Rumble and TakeOver pay-per-views. We are also going to have a little discussion on intergender wrestling. And we are going to be talking about the Hideo Itami and Dean Ambrose making their leaps from the WWE. So let's get started here with the Royal Rumble and also with TakeOver. So, um, Dom, how did you like both of those shows? Um, I really, I well, TakeOver was just fucking phenomenal. That's, I mean, they were both good shows in their own right, but TakeOver just really stole the whole weekend, obviously. But, I mean, always do. yeah, <laughs> every time. I mean, it's, you, you would think by now, like, WWE would realize, like, they need to step up their product, compa- like, now that they're putting takeovers on before their their pay-per-views, but, like, they still haven't, like, seemed to, to make an effort to that. I mean, to me, I mean, the most, com- well, one of the most compelling matches of the pay-per-view on Real Royal Rumble was the pre-show match, the Cruiserweight match, which was, like, awesome. And then the whole, the whole Royal Rumble pay-per-view itself was good. It was it ran really long compared to normal, but I mean it's kind of expected with two Royal Rumbles you're trying to fit on one card now. But I mean overall I enjoyed both shows. Awesome. Now uh, Moses, we we always love your opinion. So uh, <laughs> what what did you think of both Takeover and the Royal Rumble? Um. Well, unfortunately, I would say that. Um, most of the takeover I couldn't watch like in peace because I was kind of busy working that uh, those two days. Uh, so I only got like bits and pieces, but I made sure that I got to see the Gargano and um, the Gargano and I want to say the Champa matches. Um, so I would say those two matches like on the card were probably my favorite ones. Um, I mean, I, I went through actually no, I think I went through most of the card. Um, but I think the storytelling element of Gargano and Ricochet probably was the best match of the night. Um, you know, you got all, you you got all like you, they just created a great story, a great narrative of uh, you know this one guy. And I was telling my coworker, I said Gargano's winning the the title. I said no matter what, they have been playing this narrative all night. Gargano can't win the big one. Gargano can't do this. Gargano can't do that. And they try to drill in your head. It's kind of like that injured wrestler uh, thing when a wrestler is injured. Well, back in the 90s, if a wrestler was injured, they would usually win the match. Um, so seeing that, you know, it, it was a great, you know, moment. Um, spoiler alert, when Tommaso Ciampa and Gargano was on the stage that was even like a wow because you know everyone wanted a DIY you know reunion and you know that was one way to end a takeover that was as I think that was as powerful as uh, Tommaso Ciampa turning on Gargano and um, with I want to say the Royal Rumble it was interesting I liked it the only the only thing about um, the Royal Rumble I I really wish they did, and I was telling I was telling you guys. Uh, well, my, I think I was telling my coworker this, but how awesome would it have been? And uh, this also goes uh, to an idea that I had pitched to a friend of mine who, you know, worked for WWE, and you know, we'll get into that later on some some episode. <laughs> um, so, I thought it would be a great idea if. Well, with Selena Vega and Andrade, I thought it, they should have kind of mimicked each other. You know, have Andrade do the same thing Selena did, Selena did, but have her have him last longer. And I think it would have been hilarious. You know, granted, would have taken. I think it would have taken the uh, the seriousness of his gimmick, 
but I think it would have been a great moment. Um, I think it was great psychology uh, from Selena Vega to do that because, you know, how many people, how many Royal Rumbles have we, we have had? I think like 33, 34. And how many times has someone ran under the ring? But I had a great idea. Um, and I think that they should do this in the future is uh, have someone from NXT who's white hot, like Gargano white hot, like, you know, kind of like Daniel Bryan pretty much of 2014, where if someone took his place, they would boo that person out of the building. Have someone like that enter the Royal Rumble from the NXT brand and have them win the Royal Rumble so that they could choose somebody. You know, like I told my coworker, how cool would it have been to see Gargano enter the Royal Rumble, actually win the Royal Rumble, and then you create a match between him and Daniel Bryan for WrestleMania. Yeah, and it's definitely something that I was like thinking about too during the Royal Rumble was imagine if they actually just one day had an NXT wrestler that is like one of the top names on the NXT brand, like actually win the Royal Rumble. Yeah, and it would be a great it would be a great story from Royal Rumble to WrestleMania of, you know, oh, how can this NXT how can this NXT person be, you know, be in the majors and, you know, be the measuring stick? And that is one way to put over um, you know, someone from NXT in a tremendous way. You know, there are ways that you know, that in, in this business it's it's you know, there are ways that you get over, but there are ways that you can cement yourself as a permanent person. Hey Dave. <laughs> and uh, there's there's a way to you know do that like you know whoever broke uh, when Brock Lesnar broke Undertaker's streak he'll forever have heat for breaking the streak. Now you know that's something that will always be cemented in wrestling lore. Same thing applies to NXT. That is one way you could put someone over, and that's one of those special moments in wrestling where it can't come back again once they do it. Exactly, yeah. It's uh, all about like cementing a, ca- a specific wrestler's character for their long-term career. Uh, with Brock Lesnar, yeah, he gets heat about beating the Undertaker's streak, but he's also like known as the guy that beat broke his streak. You know, so like if you had Gargano actually have a match with Daniel Bryan uh, by winning the Royal Rumble, he would always be known as the first NXT superstar to actually win the Royal Rumble. And that would what he would be like known by. Say if he or you know somebody else in the future uh, from NXT was to actually win the the whole thing. You know, um, I think that that's definitely a, a really great um, idea. Like how to cement a future NXT uh, superstar, one that's actually white hot, and then basically have them go on to the uh, the main roster with that. Um, with that reputation, uh, or with that um, like thing, like on their resume, basically being the first NXT superstar to do that. Uh, so, like with uh, Dave, um, you actually got a prediction going in one of our uh, in our last episode where you actually said that <laughs> you were predicting a DIY reunion, and it seemed like you definitely got that. Um, so, yeah, I mean, but like right now, it just seems like it was a sign, like it, you know, with uh, uh, Gargano and uh, Champa at the, um, you know, like standing together with their titles. Do you actually think yeah. that it's going to um, like that they're actually going to form DIY, or do you think that this is just something that they're going to be like, um, or, or do you think that they would have like a different name or something like that? Yeah, I, I think that um, these guys are going to be staying in uh, NXT for a while now. Um, I mean, these guys are just mainstays at NXT right now. I mean, for them to come up to the main roster now would be a huge mistake. So if they're really going to go towards a DIY heel tag team, I would definitely go down that route. But my question would be is where would they, how would they drop their belts if they were to do this? And would, if they drop their belts, would they bring them up to the main roster? So that's the question I'm kind of like fighting with, like how they would go about doing that if they were to be a tag team, I whether think- NXT or if they even transition over into Raw SmackDown, so... Potentially, I would say they like with their status, they might even be able to hold the world both of their titles at the same time and ha- hold the tag titles mm. and just like hold the whole NXT like title picture on lockdown. I think they like if anyone could do it, it's those two guys. Like, mm-hmm. I don't think they, like there would be an issue with them holding both the two main titles and the tag titles at the same time, and then. Also, I mean, if they wanted to, they weren't going to give them the tag titles, but they wanted to bring them up. I think it, for them, it would be the case of like 
they would get called up without even dropping the titles. Mm, and they okay. would, it would be like they're going to be forced to relinquish their titles on their own terms instead of like losing them in a match. So they would hold the, so it'd be more like a hostage situation in a sense, right? Yeah, either, well, that, that, I wasn't even thinking about that, but yeah, that's <laughs> a good possibility as well. But I was thinking more along the lines of, uh, all right, they get called up and then they like vacate the titles because they're, they're on the main roster now. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah, they, they could go that route if they want to. Yeah, that could, that could work too. And then they would like, I guess, like hold a tournament or what, like, you know, how they normally hold like a tournament for the titles or like, have a battle royal for the number one contenders and all that stuff. It was, it was basically like how Asuka, you know, like how the how the NXT Women's Championship was like when Asuka vacated it because she was undefeated in NXT. And pretty much like what happened was when she dropped the title and then uh, they had like a, you know, I think that they had a uh, fatal four-way for it. Uh, and, you know, it, that's like basically what they did in order to find somebody to take the, to you know, to, you know, step up and become the next NXT Women's Champion. Uh, so possibly... <laughs> You know, and like a tournament or some sort of fatal four way is always possible for um, uh, for for those titles if they were to do like some sort of DIY reunion and then basically just like hold the entire NXT title <laughs> scene down on lockdown. <laughs> but uh, oh yeah, yeah, they could definitely go that route if they want to, but uh, that would be interesting though if they did that. Yeah, totally. I, w- I wouldn't mind seeing it. I mean, I think it would be pr- pretty cool to see. I mean, when's the last? T- well. They've what was the Shield was the last team to to actually like hold like all the belts for the for a while. Uh, not really. I mean, Ambrose had the, the U.S. and then Roman and Seth only had the tag team, and that was it. Yeah. I think it was so no one. No one's had like heavyweight belt and and all the yeah. and the other belts at the same time, really. Since, mm-hmm. since Evolution, and that was fifteen years ago. Yeah, about that. Because you had yeah. Randy as the IC, Batista and Flair attack team, and then um, Triple H was the uh, gold uh, NWA title. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 That yeah, that was I think the last stable to do that. I actually thought the Nexus did something like that, but I don't think that they. I don't think that they did. I think that they actually started winning their titles after they broke up, which is actually kind of. Uh, I don't. Know. That was like the one error that I missed was the whole Nexus era. I came in at, at their disbanding, so I couldn't. <laughs> I couldn't yeah. tell you about Nexus. <laughs> yeah, that was actually. Um, but yeah, I think it was actually Evolution that like was like the last stable that actually like locked down the entire, uh, mm-hmm. raw uh, roster, uh, the whole title scene there. Yeah. Um, yeah. But yeah, that would actually be really interesting to see Champa and Gargano actually do that. Um, but yeah, be- uh, before we move on though, Dave, what was, what did you like most about Takeover and the Rumble? What did I not like about it? What did you? Hate um, <laughs> oh no, no, no! I, I love both events. Um, I like the whole um, uh, War Machine, uh, the entrance to have the Viking thing going. That was awesome. Yeah, uh, yeah, because I was reading a piece that said that. Um, all the people involved in that was actually their like their family and their friends and everything, so that was oh, kind of pretty yeah. cool, like a backstory really cool. kind of thing. Yeah, yeah, it was like you know, I think um, um, Hanson's wife was actually one of the Vikings <laughs> standing there too. So uh, Sarah Logan. Yeah, that's why I heard too. Yeah. she was actually yeah. in that too. She had like a a helmet on a plate helmet though, so like you didn't really see her face, but people were actually able to spot her. That's yeah, cool. yeah. Yeah, I enjoyed Takeover. I like the Bianca Blair uh, Shayna Baszler match. Um, I like the finish because Bianca never tapped out, and she can make a case for a rematch and saying that she never lost. But technically, she did lose. Um, as far as the Rumble goes, um, I like both Rumbles. I felt that Becky should have shouldn't have tapped out. I felt she should have passed out the same way that Bianca Blair passed out at Takeover. But, I mean, it is what it is. I mean, I, I think it was the right decision to have Oscar win the belt, but keep the belt. But um, they could have gone that route where she just could have passed out and just kind of, you know, still kept the credibility. But, you know, she's still on fire as is, so I'm not going to nitpick on that. Well, I, you know what? I'm kind of glad that Bianca Blair, uh, Bianca Blair, wow, uh, <laughs> Bel Air, <laughs> uh, <Yeah>. Bianca, <laughs> kind of ironic, mm-hmm. but... Um, Bianca Belair lost because yeah. you know she doesn't have this Oscar pressure anymore. That you know, oh, how many wins is she gonna have until she loses? And then what do we do after she loses? Because look what happened with they what they did mm-hmm. with Oscar. 
yeah. on SmackDown Live. She had, you know, she was undefeated at NXT. She was undefeated in, going into WrestleMania. And then that was like the shock value right there when Charlotte beat her. Yeah. So, you know, ever since then, what has she done? Aside from this, like, finally, finally getting the title. Yeah. You know, but that's my two cents. Mm-hmm. That's yeah. It is what it is, you know. Um, I mean, personally, like what I liked, um, I liked Takeover. Takeover was really good. Um, uh, Gargano uh, taking on Ricochet that was just insane. Um, mm-hmm. I don't know how the hell Ricochet can do half the stuff he does in the in the ring. It's it's insane. <laughs> um, Black taking on uh, Champa, uh, also you know also really good. And just like the whole finish of the night uh, was phenomenal. Um, and of course, you know the the Rumble. I, <laughs> it was okay. I mean, like they're, they're, I can see why some people were complaining. Uh, let me put it like yeah. that. Um, and there was uh, a couple of NXT wrestlers I liked in both the women, um, in the women's uh, rumble and also in the men's. Uh, yeah. I, for example, like for in the uh, women's rumble, I actually really like seeing a uh, Casey Catanzaro. Uh, she is probably going to become like the next Kofi Kingston uh, when she goes into the Royal Rumble matches because the stuff that she was doing was. <laughs> pretty pretty insane uh there was also you know um there was also some debate too about what would you rather see more uh nxt uh talent going into the rumble matches or would you rather see like legends or like semi-retired wrestlers coming into the matches uh just to come back for like that one night and it was kind of interesting i personally like a little bit of a mixture of both but i say you should really give the nxt talent uh you know like the chance of the spots in the royal rumble more uh you know Mm -hmm. with the men's it was interesting seeing jeff jarrett uh you know (laughs) number two and don't get me wrong like, he, he was uh you know he was hilarious there, like you know talking with elias and everything and that whole spot right there but uh, there was like some question, like would because some people were actually complaining. I'm, obviously, everybody has a complaint, but they were actually mm-hmm. wanting to see more legends in the Royal Rumble matches. Fans but complain, like no. why? You know, mm. yeah. I mean, people complain about everything now. I mean, yeah. but I mean, I I kind of agree I, with the, with that side of the ar- argument, though. I mean, so you want to see more? Like, I, I'd rather see more like older guys or like like some like I don't know random people that we wouldn't get to hit the chance to see otherwise because. Like, the NXT people, they're all going to have their time to sign later on. Like, I mean, it's not like, I mean, the issue, my, I guess, here's my main issue now, is because it's changed over the past few years. Right now, like when, when an NXT person used to show up in the Rumble, that used to mean it was their time to come up to the main roster. And now, it's just, they'll show up for the, for the Rumble, and then they'll go back to NXT, and it's kind of hard to distinguish who's going to be sticking around on the main roster and who's just making a like a one-time appearance. Yeah. I mean, when uh, when that one Chinese wrestler in the Royal uh, in the Women's Royal Rumble, uh, Sha Li, when she came on, like basically almost not too many people really knew who nope. she was. No, we, no, we knew her. Yeah, I had no clue who. Yeah, but you know, if you watch the <laughs> Mae Young Classic, you know, it's like mm-hmm. one of those things that. Um, yeah. But you know. If, I, she's probably actually going to be making her NXT debut now, uh, so yeah, that was actually see. like I don't even think that she even like had a match yet in NXT. But um, you know that's um, actually kind of interesting is that they're actually bringing her into the Rumble before they even bring her into NXT, which was uh, pretty intriguing. Yeah, mm-hmm. but yeah. Well, I I have to disagree with you there, Dom. Um, of course. You know, I, I, what else? No. Well, oh, <laughs> shut up! Shut up! Um, you know, the thing is, is that I don't wholeheartedly disagree. I see where you're coming from, but you know, how many, the thing is to me is that I'm not saying like, don't have a surprise entrant and like, don't get me wrong. I was actually shocked this year. I was like, actually, wow. Like I told my coworker, I said, I'm actually surprised that not a lot of legends showed up. Like, you know, you expect, you know, someone, um, you know, unfortunately, I, I called it. I said Kenny Omega wasn't going to come, and he didn't come. <laughs> mm-hmm. um, but, you know, in the past, you've had Jericho. You've had, you know, seen, uh, you know, you've had your surprise entrance. You've had your, your, your injured wrestler making a comeback. But this one felt good because, you know, this gave NXT people an opportunity to, yeah, you know, do they get their 
Uh, will they get their time in the future? Absolutely. But this kind of gets their feet wet, you know, in the big stage, you know, and this also gets, you know, there are a lot of fans who aren't like us that look at NXT, uh, you know, and I'll tell you this right now, I don't watch NXT except for takeovers, but, you know, there are people that are even worse than me that don't know who Johnny Gargano is, that don't know who Tommaso Ciampa is, that don't know, you know, uh, Zelina Vega and, and, um, What's her face? Um, you know, uh, Shayna Baszler. You know, there, there are people that don't know these people. And this is their way of being introduced to them. Like, for example, when Bo Dallas was the first person, I think he was the first NXT person to come into the Rumble. I had no idea who Bo <laughs> Dallas was. I was like, who the hell is this random guy that looks like he should be, you know, he looks like IRS's son for some odd reason. You just couldn't believe but, it. Yeah, so <laughs> shut up. <laughs> took me a minute to get that um, but you know I didn't know who that was and then someone told me oh that's Bo Dallas from NXT and then I did my research on Bo Dallas and then I became a, I believed in, in uh, Bo <laughs> so you know I think that it gives them an opportunity you know and this is it, it's the same thing I have an issue with with like part time wrestlers coming into the WWE and wrestling on the, the, the upper mid to main event level, you know, like, for example, The Rock, he doesn't do anything all year round, and then he gets a shot at WrestleMania uh, for, the, you know, to face John Cena. You know, like, stuff like that. You know, he got an automatic championship match against CM Punk. Didn't do anything. He just showed up, said, I want the title, I'm gonna face CM Punk, and then that's it. I have a problem with that because it takes a spot away from younger talent. Now, I understand that this is a business and it's a draw, but that can go to someone that deserves the spot. Yeah. I'm not saying entirely. That's, I'm a, not saying that's entirely. a full title opportunity. I'm just, we're just talking about a spot in the rumble here. It's not. I, I know, but I'm saying that the same thing, the same rule applies to, 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 uh, to, to the Royal Rumble. You know, you don't, I'm not saying don't have, you know, like have it balanced. You know, have a balanced amount of NXT guys right. or NXT girls and legends because yeah. that can be a potential spot for a person that's trying to, you know, get their shine. But also, if you if you look at it this way, the le- having the legends come in is a, is a good way to push current talent as well. Like the Jeff Jarrett coming in and having Elias uh, go over against Jeff Jarrett is a huge push for, for, for Elias in that spot as well. So, yes, I mean... Right. It's a double-edged sword on this one, in my opinion. Yeah, but how I mean, many times? How many times are you gonna go back to the wishing well and, and like, like have Gold come back and have like you know the Rock come back? Like, there's a certain amount of time where a surprise is a surprise. Like when Chris Jericho was doing it, you know, I love Chris Jericho. I'm a huge fan of his. But there was a point in time where I was like, okay, when is Jericho gonna show up? Well, I mean, and that's why Jericho has stopped now. <laughs> exactly. But, you know, so you, there's a time where you like that becomes a little less shinier well, with certain people. Is. Jeff Jarrett. I mean, who the fuck expected Jeff Jarrett to come back? I mean, everyone uh, uh, like assumed Jeff Jarrett would be like done with WWE for the rest of his life. He was never supposed to come back. First and, off, and, like, especially since up, like, he was more of like the man in TNA, in my opinion. Exactly. You know, oh, yeah. like, well, he, was, like, he, he was actually seen as like the, the most hated man in wrestling when he was on TNA. <laughs> At one point, it was around like the JBL thing when he was like, and I don't know how the hell I actually thought JBL was worse than Jeff Jarrett. Jeff Jarrett actually somehow topped him. I don't know what the hell he did though. Uh, no one, no one. Listen, bro. No one tops Vince Russo, bro. Or even <laughs> God, I can't stand that guy. <laughs> but, and there's a reason. <laughs> So, uh, but, you know, like, I, I get where you're coming from, Dom. I, I get it, but I feel like, you know, a spot a spot taken is a spot, could be a potential spot wasted. You know, like, imagine Tommaso Ciampa coming in and, like, you know, helping Gargano, you know, instead of, I don't know. Uh, you know that, now that you mention that, that could have been a good spot that they pulled at the Rumble, though. Like, to set up the <laughs> DIY. Hmm. Like, <laughs> they had Gargano in. Why not pull Chompa in there and have them work together in Rumble and set up and set yeah. the water? I thought that was going to happen too, but it never happened. So yeah, well, there's a lot of things that I thought was going to happen and didn't happen. 
Yeah. <laughs> it's, not the, it's not the time oh. for that yet. <laughs> Damn it. Like, you know, it, and it's, uh, you know, the, the, I mean, it's it's essentially just beating a dead horse with uh, the Royal Rumble. Um, sorry, but I'm, I'm trying to do my Mr. Rogers impression. I'm trying to put my shoes on right now, so that's why it's, uh, you know, looking like I'm looking like this. But uh, what was I going to say? Yeah, you, you know, it also, I guess, like, also with uh, one question in mind is, where do you put the NXT people, you know, number-wise? Do you sporadically put them, like, three, eight? No, I mean, the, it would be best to break them up, because you don't want, like, a big butt dump of NXT people, like, in <laughs> flux. Like, I know, then it turns into like, yeah. Yeah. the NXT that. Rumble, so, <laughs> like, you gotta, you have to spread it out a bit. Yeah. Oh, that was the, uh, they did that for uh, Evolution, wasn't it? There was like a rumble, and it was just like essentially everyone from NXT was just like one through like 25, and then the last few were like, I think, Legends or something like that. I thought there were Unless I'm just... Legends in the beginning. Mm. Yeah. I don't know. I know, I, all I know <laughs> is that it was something along those lines where it was just like Legends, NXT, or. NXT Legends, and then it was just like, all right, well, uh, is this NXT or is this Evolution? <laughs> you know? NXT Evolution. <laughs> but, yeah, all right. for a uh, I'm not going to lie. One thing I did enjoy, segue, 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 mm-hmm. is uh, Nia Jax, you mm. know, completely destroying our truth getting in and then getting her ass handed to her by your Dolph Ziggler and uh, Rey Mysterio. That was some yeah, swerve, huh? I mean, so, like, mm-hmm. what did you... So, you really liked that spot then where Nia Jax just came out of nowhere and then just, like, tossed our truth like, um, just basically out of the rumble, I mean, before he could even yeah. get in. And then just yeah. basically just got uh, barraged. <laughs> yeah, it, was just, it was shock value. I mean, and that's what Vince wants. He wants shock. And, you know, <laughs> I mean, you know, like that that's two takeaways you could say from the rumble was that you know, you who who's gonna think that Nia Jax was gonna come in and and just like you know I don't know tear the house down for like two seconds. And <laughs> yeah, pretty destroy much. Parts of it and like do all of that stuff and then like the fact that WWE even went about and actually let you know, and I'm not I'm not one for domestic violence. I'm anti domestic <laughs> violence. But the fact that pulled the trigger and allowed a man to hit a woman in a sport where they fight was rather interesting because uh I actually spoke to my coworker and he was like, uh, how can you support this? I said, It's professional wrestling. Yeah. You know, you got like, a, calm down, a, calm down. <laughs> you got an old man who walks down the ramp once a year in goth clothing, pretending he's dead. You got his brother, who's the mayor in real life, <laughs> sells insurance, is a, and was previously a dentist, a fake character that went to WCW, and he was burned alive. Like this, we we're in a we're in an industry where there's a tax guy that taxes people, and there's a rich guy that kicks basketball balls at at uh, kicks basketball balls away from little children you know and tna has been doing this for some time now the indies have been doing it for some time where you know they'll have an intergender match and a woman will go after a guy and the guy will go after the woman and it's all in good fun it's a sport it's entertainment you know it's just people are too uh they're too not soft uptight like yeah yeah it's i think it's just more of like the sense of that they just don't know like what to do with seeing something like that and i i think that honestly i think like the whole domestic violence thing is a bit like of a leap (laughs) because like you said the whole thing here is like a show like literally if you have a guy take a sock out of his ass and then say that's a cobra and then hit you in the mouth (laughs) i mean okay like and if that like wins you the match and like okay so what's wrong with seeing um you know, um, an intergender match. If this whole thing here is basically supposed to be like, you know, a, a superhero fight, uh, oh. it, or you know, something along those lines, you know, a show, then you know, there's really nothing wrong with it. And you know, like, obvi- honestly, 
some of those matches are actually pretty interesting in a sense too because you get to see you know someone from a completely different division take on somebody uh, from you know another completely different division that normally don't mix around too often uh, and then you have like some wrestlers that do it more like do it more oftenly like Joey Ryan and uh, mm -hmm. James Ellsworth you know they were big on intergender wrestling um, but then like you have you know just like some of these matchups here um, that that you like normally like possibly like, wouldn't really see too much like for example with Lufisto and Necro Butcher mm -hmm. and uh, you know like, uh, some other like really like uh, like death matches between men and women and you know it's all just for like what you guys were saying why did not Nia Jax come out the 30th spot and just like wreck house for shock value and it's something yeah. that people mm -hmm. you know yeah. aren't expecting to see well, and they see it I mean also all right here's the thing like when when I came out, I was like, eh, I, I wasn't like feeling it at first. Well, personally, I'm not the biggest on Nia Jax, and that's that's why. But they, the way they did it, it was really well done. Like they, they, like as soon as they started like working with it, I was like, they, they they're actually working it really well. Like you have someone like Nia Jax who can like kick ass in in the men's division. Like it's not like it's not a stretch. Like they the, yeah. the people who see it as such a stretch. Uh, for as well, like for Nia Jax to be getting in the ring with men, like she's gonna get her ass beat or whatever. Or why? Why would you let her compete with them? She was fucking people up. Like she, she did. But honestly, like, and someone like someone else has said this. She did better in the men's draw rumble than she did in the women's draw <laughs> rumble. I yeah, mean, she, she, yeah, she threw out uh, what's his name, Mustafa Ali. I mean, for yeah. God's sakes. I yeah. mean, I mean, I mean that's not that much, but. <laughs> yeah, but it's Mustafa Ali for God's sakes. I mean, the guy needs like all the shine he can get. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, but, uh, you know, I don't hate the, it. But. Yeah, the way they the way they handled it was really well. It was really well done to me, and I I, I thought it was a great spot, and I thought they handled it really well. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, there was people like getting all up in arms. Ooh, that's, you can't like, I don't like. It's not that big of a deal. I mean, well. I mean, for us, we've been, like, watching wrestling for the longest time, so we know, like, we understand intergender matches, and we understand, like, it, we know it's, like, not a huge deal, and, like, yeah. there there are, like, plenty of female wrestlers that could, that hold their own and, like, beat the crap out of them, like, yeah. uh, Candice Horay, someone, like, the first time I've seen her, she was, she was in an intergender tag match, and mm -hmm. she was just, like, messing everyone up. And, like, she really stole that whole matchup from me. And I was like, damn, why can't they do this, like, in WWE? Mm -hmm. Like, yeah. if they if they show, they allowed them to show this side of them, like, it would it would get people, like, really get behind them as well. And it, it is a good way to push, like, their talent as well. And but, everything... Sorry. No, uh, go ahead. I was going to say, everything is just politically driven now. You know, like, mm -hmm. we've... We've had match. I mean, look at Jeff. Speaking of Jeff Jarrett, he had a match with uh, China back, you know, in the '90s. And you know, granted, it was a little misogynist, uh, misogynistic, but you know, the fact that they were able to work a match, like a lot of people are, are under, uh, like putting WWE under fire for supporting this. Meanwhile, like slamming things like Gillette, which I understand why you slam Gillette for their ad, but you know, the the thing is. There are so many promotions that don't get to see the light of day as, like, you know, uh, WrestleGate or, you know, um, or even ROH, NJPW, WWE. Like, there are people that aren't able to have a camera crew. They just have shows. And they do energetic matches all the time, and people don't look at that. You know, they don't bat an eye. You know, it's not, you know, I, I can see where they're coming from with, like, oh, uh, don't. You know that this promotes violence against women, but realistically, you know, this is MMA. Like, you know, I mean, it's not MMA, but it's, you know, you don't go and say, you don't go to your son and say, hey, you want to watch this? You're not allowed to because it promotes violence against other people for no reason at all. You don't do that. It's a double standard, you know. Yeah. And we know, we know. Shocker! I I can't believe I'm going to say this, but. Wrestling's not that real. <gasps> oh, my yeah. Gosh. yeah. My gosh. So, Santa Claus not like, real, too. It's, it's, <laughs> it's a show. It's supposed to make... 
it's supposed to make you get a reaction. It's supposed to, it's supposed to, you know, like it's supposed to be like any other form of entertainment, you know, and these people, you know, I mean, you know, these people, and I, I've said this time and time again in other, in uh, I think our first podcast, these people put their time and bodies on the line day in and day out to make sure that you get the best show that you could possibly get. And that's what they try to do. And they're coming under fire for something that has been going on for the last, I don't know, over over a decade. Like now people are, you know, it, it's just people need to come back down to reality, realize that everything's not the good fight, and just get entertained by wrestling. That's it. Like, but, you know, we can we, we can look into the NFL and that's legitimate domestic violence. That their PR you know, and I know this is a wrestling podcast, and it's only wrestling. But uh, you know, this is a, a we branch uh, out a little bit know. here and there. Mm-hmm. <laughs> well, yeah. Well, well now we're going to branch out because exactly. So you know, the NFL when they were having a slew, a slew of domestic violence, you know, uh, uh, things going against them with different players. Then they had the whole CTE thing going on because of the movie concussion they were under uh, a pr they had a pr black eye for some time you know and they just kind of swept it under the rug here in wwe this is just you know a this is just you know an environment of wrestling it's it's you know like it, it's like you know are you gonna are you gonna be go under fire with ufc who you know they do fights like this all what every month or every Saturday, you know, with men and women. Granted, it's not intergender, but you know, you're gonna say, "Oh, that's assault. That's assault." No, you're going there to watch something, you know. And everyone has their vices, you know. And people need to stop being politically driven on every single thing. It's a show. Have fun. Enjoy it. That's it. Case in point. Yeah, I mean, like, going back to the whole Nia Jax thing here with, um, you know, with, like, seeing Randy Orton, RKO, and everything like that. I I mean, I think that on both sides of the spectrum here, I think that people just really like to see Nia Jax get, you know, just just get, like, you know, like three finishers in a row here, a super Mm -hmm. kick, a 619, and then an RKO. If you didn't, um, if you just didn't really like her or if you did like her being in that match. But like what you said, though, it's um, the people that were actually offended. Like, I'm not talking about the people that were just like, oh, I don't like Nia Jax. Uh, Because, yeah, like, you know, there's people that just don't like her and didn't want to think that she would be, like, the perfect person uh, to – yeah, or like the right person to come out there. I think it would have been cool to see Becky Lynch go in there, but obviously, mm-hmm. like you know, that's just like my preference because I think that she could have also fucked up a lot of people as well. But mm-hmm. I mean, regardless, though, I I'm talking about like the people here that were actually like, offended by this thing. Like, why would you get like you know like how could you get offended by somebody that is willingly and you know also have has worked and trained with other men just go down there and just do what she does best, put on a show, you know. Um, I- Oh, no, sorry. No, go on. Uh, Just going to say, like what Dom said, you know, it's, you know, it's Nia Jax, so it's believable. Like, you can see her, like, she, you know, if it was, like, Alexa Bliss or someone, like, you know, if it was someone else. Yeah, because she's, like. That would have been a slight issue. Yeah. That would have been a slight issue. Yeah, exactly. I mean. I, um, you know, I can see that, like, you know, because Naya currently is, like, you know, like the tallest and also I would have to say the strongest woman in the women's division. So, yeah, it would, you know, add more to the story about seeing her, you know, be able to just physically like, you know, stand toe to toe, if not like be even stronger than a lot of the men that she was and, up against. And let me just point this out, you know, for people that think, oh, you su- you know, um, WWE supports domestic violence if they allow a woman to be in an intergender match. It's the same, then the same rule must apply for the people that watch a TV show. Like, if you ever watch a TV show or a movie, or you even played a video game where the bad guy is like getting everything, like just constantly beating down the protagonist and beating him down and down and down, and then he finally gets, gets his uh, due d- diligence and he dies and he gets killed. Does that mean that that person supports manslaughter? Like, 
you know, like uh, like Beauty and the Beast, right? I'm pretty sure we've all watched Beauty and the Beast, and I'm pretty sure our, our viewers did. And you know what? To those that haven't seen it yet, spoiler alert, you had about 30 or something years, just like The Sixth Sense, but Gaston gets killed, right? So do I support manslaughter because the Beast, uh, because Gaston dies in the end? No. It's a movie. It's fictitious. And I'm just going to leave it at that. Yeah, and I well, think that you weren't talking about Brock Lesnar when you said The Beast, so. <laughs> <laughs> He's the Beast incarnate. There's a difference. Uh, Don, did you want to add something? I guess. Well, I, guess, no, I was just going to say if Brock Lesnar's The Beast, then I'm just going to say Paul Heyman's Bell. Enough said. Mm. What a sweet story. I would. Mm. Oh my God, that's just so. <laughs> that's so heartwarming. I, I love Imagine chopping Paul Heyman's face onto Bell's body. I've been making memes lately. I've been making <laughs> memes, hell. and I might actually make that well, later. I think you just guard me for life. Oh, I'm, gonna more I'm actually going to make this. <laughs> uh, so, like, do you really believe that this is a sign that WWE is going to have a lot more intergender wrestling matches? Um, another thing here that I actually heard uh, or actually saw online uh, was that because WWE is planning on moving to Fox, they this possibly uh, this possibly is something that they are doing to try to get more viewership before they actually switch their uh, network. Uh, do you think that this is something that they are really just doing to increase their viewership, or do you think that's something that they're actually serious about doing? Well, I mean, uh, I mean look at look at Raw for example. I mean. They kind of tease a little uh, Nia Jax, Dean Ambrose thing going. So, I mean, it could just be an encounter, but, I mean, they could be teasing a small, maybe, match or feud with Dean and Nia. I mean, I could be wrong. They've teased just going a off. lot of going intergender off. stuff. And but, yeah, it just I, mean, I mean, it also goes back to, to when James Ellsworth sh- first showed up. They were having James Ellsworth come in, and he was picking fight with all the women. Mm-hmm. But but the issue they had there was they would have everyone beat up James Ellsworth and that was it like yeah, James yeah. Ellsworth wouldn't get any any yeah and they put in and it was like you you get your half ass in it here like <laughs> kind of going back to what you were saying too I think it had something to do with just that whole like believable aspect of it too which I mean okay but you know Ellsworth you know he's 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 like a pencil <laughs> you know like, like uh, yeah, but you know, I mean. The fact that they 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 still couldn't even pull the trigger with Ellsworth though is like, come yeah. on, like, you expect like Becky Lynch could beat the shit out of James Ellsworth in a fight, so you're not gonna let them have an actual match, like they they did, they they set up a yeah, match. With, I think they it was did, Oscar. Yeah. It was yeah, Oscar, yeah. yeah. James yeah. Ellsworth versus Oscar, and, he had and what one they with did, Becky they had Lynch Oscar too. like kick him once or like <laughs> do do like two moves on him, and that was it. Right. He didn't get, he didn't like touch her at all. It's like, come on, like. Yeah. If if you're gonna play like one side, you're gonna you gotta be able to play I both mean, sides of the, right. the argument. I, I yeah. actually wanted to ask one thing here. Did you guys see any of Ellsworth's uh, intergender matches outside of WWE? Because I'm just I never really saw them. But I'm wondering, like, does is he actually like a good wrestler? Hey, he's decent. I liked him. <laughs> I, I mean, seen I saw books here and there, and he does some yeah. he does do some entertaining like bits here and there. It's it's more like comedy wrestling. Yeah. That he does in yeah, than, gotcha. like, wrestling. But but it works. Yeah. I mean, like he he had right. the intergender title for for a while. <laughs> oh yeah, I forgot. <laughs> that's what brought him back in. You know, that's what brought him back into the WWE was the whole intergender. You know, because oh, yeah, the thing is with WWE, exactly once and you know that's the thing with the indies and that's another topic for another day. But you know, a lot of these guys that come back, it's because WWE realizes that, oh, we messed up, let's bring them back, and then they mess mm-hmm. them up one more time. Case in um, point, Hawkins. Yeah. God. Exactly. Well, I, I'm oh. hoping for WrestleMania is their, uh, their, his his streak ends. But <laughs> I could be wrong. Time one, to end two, the streak, three. guys. Actually, but... Time to end that streak. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> but... Uh, anyway, back back on to topic. Uh, yeah, they teased it a lot with the James Ellsworth, uh, but they mm-hmm. never they never pulled the trigger. And I think this was their way of testing the waters even more. Yeah. And I think it's a potential. Like it, I don't think they're actually gonna go through with it. Like there was like small backlash, and I think they're gonna see that small backlash, and that's gonna be enough for them to say, "All right, we can't actually do this." And it's it sucks because I mean I think they should actually 
go through with it, but I think, like, this was just them seeing, like, if they can actually do it. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I definitely don't see anything in the future happening mm-hmm. where they go, like, you know, Becky Lynch, which I think would be a great match, uh, like a Becky Lynch versus, like, Finn Balor. Well, you know? there's been, like, big... Oh, I don't know where this even started, but there's been rumors of Becky Lynch facing The Rock somewhere. Like, I've been seeing that all... Oh, yeah. Over. That's like, interesting. I didn't even hear that one. Yeah. <laughs> <I've> been, uh, <laughs> I heard, I heard, I heard like, the whole thing with Seth going on. She still, like, you know, pokes Seth here and there. But I don't... Like, that was one of the intergender matches that I, you know, saw being teased. Um, you know, th- there's been several of them. And, you know, like what you said, I just don't think that the trigger's going to be pulled. Like, they tease it, but... I don't mm-hmm. think they're actually going to go through with it. Yeah. 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 It's, it sucks because, like, it's mm-hmm. missed opportunities there that they could be having. Like, those could all be, like, great matches, but they're not willing to give it to us. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's all I got to say. <laughs> all right. So, you know, um, like, what, you know, like, let's say, like, WWE did it somehow embrace this. Uh, just kind of like, you know, a fantasy thing here. Um, but, like, what, like, intergender matches do you think would work, like, really well? I know like, we were talking about a couple of them, but if there was anything else to add to that, what do you think? Uh, and also not just, like, WWE, but also maybe even NXT. I can see you a know, Shayna Baszler versus a, uh, a Ricochet. That'd be yeah. an interesting one. Ricochet. <laughs> yeah, that would well, be man. interesting. Um... I mean, I definitely yeah. would like to see, you know, um, how about um, maybe uh, Seth Rollins taking on uh, Santina Marella. Oh, God. Mm, <laughs> come on. <laughs> no. I thought we were past that by now. Oh, no. We always have to bring back the past. <laughs> oh, but that, oh. But finish where Santina is God. <laughs> actually, that actually is an interesting point, too. Um, people are also talking about, like, how, you know, like, what would you think if, you saw like a, a woman holding a, a man's title, but okay. I mean, but I know like what they were doing. Uh, yeah. Like you know, I mean, technically they had men holding the women's title. I don't so. think it would be China did it. China yeah, held. Oh, yeah. That, yeah, China did do it. China held the oh, no, IC wait, title for a while. Jacqueline, Jacqueline held the cruiserweight. Yeah, uh, and the yeah. hardcore and the hardcore title yeah. as well. Yes. Yep. Um. Didn't didn't Jazz hold like the hardcore title, or someone? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, she did too. And Molly Holly, actually, like the way that Molly Holly did it was kind of funny though. She like hit um, I forget who it was, and like the head with a frying pan, <laughs> just like randomly, <laughs> like crept up behind them. Um, but yeah, like you know, they, there has been some like women that have held like you know men's titles before. It's just no, that I don't think it'd be an issue. Yeah. I mean, first, I mean, I can see Nijax holding the IC title or the US title. Mm. I think uh, honestly, I think that'd be more progressive than anything they've done so far. First woman to hold a major WWE championship. That will even give it a universal title. Uh, she can hold the That's universal okay. title. Yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. yeah. Why not? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I mean, forget the women's belt. Just go for the universal belt, right? Exactly. Go for it. Yeah. Why there you not? go. Yeah. Op- open belts. <laughs> yeah. There you go. Just yeah. anybody. I want to see John Cena win the title he deserves. Mm-hmm. The women's well, I mean, championship. They, te- they oh. teased the John Cena versus Becky for that one a little bit. I think that would be a good match to see John mm-hmm. Cena versus Becky win. Yes. Yeah. Like, yeah, be the, the 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 new up and coming potential face of the WWE versus the, the, old, the original the old face. face. Old face. Yeah. The old face. The old with face. Hair now. I if if Stone Cold Steve Austin was still good, I'd like to see him versus Becky. I oh, think that would be okay. a good match. Mm-hmm. Yeah, a lot of yeah. people just, you know, th- th- there's, like, countless opportunities for Becky. <laughs> I mean, yeah. you know, just, like, the, the first Becky game. versus everyone on the mm-hmm. roster. That's that's yeah. what we yeah. want. A gauntlet <laughs> match. I have a gauntlet match at WrestleMania 37. <laughs> yes. Yeah, there you <laughs> go. Becky runs the gauntlet. Oh, no, the, entire, the entire card is Becky versus the next person. And Becky just <laughs> goes through each single it's locker room. Like- uh, every person in the locker room. This sounds like two mm-hmm. K nine, like two K nineteen, uh, like super hard mode or something like that. You know, like the next, uh, <laughs> the next game in the series uh, or something. Just you're Becky. You have to uh, fight everybody, men, women, everybody, and then at the end you fight Vince. Oh God! I just everybody. thought of a, a good, a good intergender match that I would like to see, and that uh, Nia Jax and Tamina versus the Usos. That would be interesting. I think they would just That'd be like, interesting. Tear the house down on that match. Samoans. Mm-hmm. Samoan battle. Yeah. yeah. All right. Um, 
so you know that's basically our intergender discussion here, our intergender wrestling discussion. So uh, recently, I believe it was just today, but uh, Hideo Itami, uh, also known as Kenta, uh, just got re uh, just requested release from his WWE contract. Um, and also recently, Am uh, Dean Ambrose has actually said um, that he wants out of his WWE contract once it expires in April. And WWE has actually confirmed that they are going to not renew Ambrose's contract once it is up in April. So uh, since it was announced that Dean will not renew his contract um, after WrestleMania, you know, there was like this whole like debate here that, you know, that if it was a work or not. Um, obviously, like you know, it it's not a work, right? <laughs> well, the the fact that they announced it is what was why it sounded fishy to me. Like yeah. Dean Ambrose is such a big talent, like they they would I feel like they would want to try and keep that under wraps for as long as they can. And well, like, I think it's a mutual thing between them. What? What do you mean? That they both like done with their contracts? Like one no, Dean they want to get rid of them? I think, as in terms of Dean Ambrose, the um, you know booking has nothing for him. Look at the matches that he's doing, mm -hmm. you know, and he's getting frustrated. Well, I mean, that's just booking. I mean, they, there's so much that you can actually do with him if you were, if you were to book him right. They're just they don't know how to book. Yeah, that, that's that's <laughs> that. I mean, there's plenty you can do with him. Like, and it's it's funny now because like to me like. He was stale when he first showed up. Well, not when he first showed up, but when when the shield first took off, I was like, all right, he's not really doing anything. But now that he's came back with his new gimmick, he's doing a lot better than he was doing in his first run. And I feel like yeah. like you could have dropped him back then. And now now that you're actually starting to make up for it is, is when you're ready to drop him. It's like, to me, it made no sense. Yeah, his character took a step back, honestly, if you look at his character. And when he came back, so even before he won the belt, I mean, if you look at his character from then and now, it's completely different. Oh yeah, and definitely like when he was in like CZW, I mean, the guy was a beast. Like the guy was like a mm. lunatic, you know. Mm -hmm. um, well, I mean, and then, exactly. all they had to do was like book him as an actual lunatic and right. and like book mm -hmm. his character right, and it's yeah. it's just like they dropped the ball on it. They you know they were trying frustrated. it. They were trying to do it, but the thing is that I. Don't, I think that when he came back, they were trying to put less focus on him being like the lunatic fringe, which he was supposed to be. And then they just started to try to make him like this, like just strong, like this, uh, just brute uh, of like a heel where, I don't know, it just like doesn't have the same feeling at all compared to like when he was more of like a, a face wrestler uh, where he was just kind of like, a, like he really just let like his craziness show. Here he's just kind of like, oh, I'm just like going to be a dick. <laughs> and, um, you know, like he, he doesn't have like that same feeling anymore. Like he just feels like a regular old heel. Well, I think, um, I think that, you know, once he leaves WWE, if if it's true, I think he's going to knock it out of the park. I think the situation with him is like the same situation with Cody. Now, I'm not going to say he's going to get white hot like Cody, but I think that, um, you know, the fact that he's a known name and I think anyone from WWE that leaves, you know, automatically kills it in the indies. I mean, Pat. you know, if that's so, <laughs> you know, if, if, well, Pack is a different story, but. You know, the only one that really wasn't successful was, uh, you know, Enzo and Big Cass. And, I mean, Enzo, it was more or less just because he decided to go into the rapping. But Big Cass, like... <laughs> well, know, also, he, uh, Enzo didn't have much right. to give elsewhere anyway, so... Uh, <laughs> well, yeah, because... How you do it? You know, <laughs> you know I mean, like... He, we saw the full potential that he had to give in WWE, and it wasn't enough to get him anywhere else. What did yeah. you guys no. think of how Ryback did when he left WWE? You mean Cryback? Cryback. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I guess he was. Explains it. <laughs> yeah, I have no I mean, good feelings about Ryback. So, I mean, Ryback was always just crap the whole time he was there, and I think he'll continue to be crap. I mean, mm -hmm. I, I don't I know. For guys that, the issue is, is that guys that got pushed too early on, I think they have some sense of entitlement. And when they suck and they go into the indies, it shows. Mm -hmm. You know, like, you can have a Joe Schmo who's still green 
get pushed to the moon in the main event, gets cut, goes to the indies, and sucks. Or you can have a guy who's naturally gifted, naturally talented, like Cody Rhodes, and pack and kill it. You know, so it, 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 if it, I think once WWE gets rid of them, it shows it shows them you know it shows their it exposes them to who they really are as a wrestler, you know. Um, I mean Simon Gotch, well, last I heard he's doing all right, and um, you know I, I I think it just falls on the person. Yeah, definitely. I, you know, it's in in the end, it all is up to the superstar. Um, it's all up to the wrestler. Um, you know, Cody. He it just seemed like Cody had like all this pent up. Um, like you know, he just wanted to go out there and prove who he was. You know, like he's not Stardust. He's Cody Rhodes, and this is who Cody Rhodes is. And that's what WWE was not like allowing him to do. So right when he got out, he just really just started uh, hustling, and he just started to really you know. Uh, really just start uh, kill it in, in the indies and now look at them uh you know it's it's really phenomenal uh, i think that when guys leave the wwe some of them they just have this uh this character that worked for them so for so long that they were or like they just have uh like years and years of this um this energy that was not released in wwe when they were performing there because they were being held back the entire time and then right when they get out, they're just able to just uh, let it all loose, so to speak. And that's why they just start getting titles placed on them. They start working more shows. They start getting booked like crazy. Uh, and you get to see them like a, as a completely different person in a, diff- in, in a completely different, uh, you know, in a lot of different promotions. Uh, they like almost completely change or they just kind of go back to the same person that you used to love. Oh. Well, look at John Morrison. Yeah, he yeah. was a Mr. He was much, and now he's like killing it. Like he doesn't, he doesn't even. And he was pre Cody, you know. He he was pre Cody, you know, where Cody was the example of you don't have to be in WWE to be successful. But John Morrison left, got left, uh, dropped by WWE, and he became successful. And look, he's killing it. Well, even look at Kurt Angle when Kurt Angle left WWE to go to TNA. You, you put a killing on in TNA because WWE was starting to run out with stuff to work with on him, and like he he was doing as just as good work in TNA as he was doing in WWE at the time. And it's like it's sometimes like you can only do so much in one place before you have to move on to something else. And also, like WWE is kind of like it's like a limiter. It's like you put someone. In there, and you're only allowed to work at like 40 percent, 50 percent of your potential. Yeah. Like, look at AJ Styles. AJ Styles, I would say, I mean, he's still fucking killing it, but I mean, he hasn't been giving everything that he has, in my opinion, to what we could be getting out of AJ Styles. Shinsuke Nakamura, another perfect example. I was about to say him. Yeah. Shinsuke <laughs> was yeah. what his last match with with AJ Styles before he came to to. WWE, fucking yeah, was incredible. And then mm-hmm. look at the match they, that they put on at WrestleMania. It's like, mm-hmm. come on. Yeah. Like, it's... Mm-hmm. And now we just yeah. lost the R Truth. Oh, <laughs> but actually, I, I mean, I'll be real with you, though. I mean, I watched uh, R Truth when he was uh, Ron Killings in TNA. Mm-hmm. He, he was good, like, really insane. Like, uh, well, R Truth like, has always had great yeah, potential. They just, it's a, that's yeah. another person that just never, yeah. never was given the right opportunities. Yeah, yeah. Like I yeah. thought our truth was like he was like t- like the face of TNA too, like one of like the top guys there too. Um and now, you know, like you know, once again just like kind of wasted potential. I mean, there were times when WWE was starting to push him. I I mean like I know what they just put the US Championship on him, but like I I don't know, like it seems like they start doing something with him and then they just start, you know, mm-hmm. not <laughs> anymore. Uh yeah, so that's it's really weird with him. That's everybody though. I mean, yeah. not everybody, a lot, but a lot of people, you know, they'll, they'll push someone like Wade Barrett and then, oh, well, uh, I guess we're going to just give up on you midway. Yep. Bye bye. That's just mm-hmm. how they are. Yeah, totally. Uh, so, like, if if Dean is, like, really serious about leaving the WWE, uh, do you think that he would set sights? Like, what, what, what promotion do you think he would set his sights on? Like, do you think it would be AEW? Do you think he would actually go back to CZW? Do you think he'd go to a different promotion? Or do you think that he might even just quit wrestling altogether? I mean, it, I it's, a tough, 
it's tough to to see with Dean because Dean's such a such a confusing individual. Like you can see how frustrated he was with WWE and just in general with attitude. Like it, it like at that at this point, you would think he wants to be just done with everything. But at the same time, it's like, all right, if he he's under a good environment that he likes to to be working under, like would that spark come back for him? And I, I mean, I think for him, I think New Japan would be somewhere good for him to to go and work in New Japan for a bit. I mean, I would I would say AEW, but personally, I don't know. I just don't think he would really fit in in AEW right now. I honestly don't even see him in NJPW. I see him in ROH. Or, yeah. or Impact. I guess. Ah! Uh, not Impact. I don't know about Impact. I, I think, ROH. honestly, he would be better in ROH. Like, that's his, you know, like, ROH is, like, that type of uh, environment for him. Yeah, I, I could see him, like, maybe working in the indies for a little bit, and then, because I know Ring of Honor lost a lot of talent. I could see him maybe going there maybe afterwards and kind of signing with them. I think that would be a good spot for him to kind of showcase his skills and he would have a little more freedom than what he's having right now as far as yeah. you know character development and whatnot. So, so he would uh, yeah, still I think have he'll, freedom too to like yeah. go to other promotions. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I mean, do you th- so like if if Dean was like uh, you know to go do you, and maybe like. Maybe like five or so years down the road. Do you think that we would ever see Dean in the WWE again? Uh, mm. Never say never. Yeah. Yeah, never I mean, you never. you never say never, but at the same time, it's like, with someone like that's that frustrated with the company, do you really think, I mean, I guess, no, that's true, Jeff because Jarrett. we saw Jeff Jarrett, Jeff Jarrett last, uh, come back. Like, we never thought we'd see Jeff Jarrett come back again, and look what happened. Exactly. So it's like, yeah, it's, I mean, it's all timing. Yeah. yeah. Ultimate Warrior. All these guys claimed that they were never going to come back. They came back. Yep. Yeah. I mean, he's just said the door's yeah. always open. <laughs> I mean, if he's, here's the thing. If he's looking for money in five years, we'll, we'll see him again. Totally. That's my thought. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, the same thing here goes with uh, Hideo, too. Um, you know, some, fr- uh, some people are guessing, like, where he's going to go, and a lot of them were guessing Noah. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, and like or New Japan, I I think like honestly with Hideo's situation, it could also just be like a, a factor of like just like you know like homesickness in a way because mm-hmm. I know that you know uh, you know especially like when you're you know a, a foreigner living in you know living in a different country, um, you know it just doesn't feel like home to you you know and I think because like you know he's been in the states you know, like, for a while, and, you know, I think, like, he's probably gone back, you know, on fourth to Japan, but I think that he potentially might, you know, go back to, you know, his native uh, promotion there, which was Noah, uh, which was a lot of people thinking, but, I mean, I think New Japan is going to try to, you know, grab him. I could see that. I mean, you know, Hideo was lights out, you know, before he signed with WWE, and they know his potential, and I'm pretty sure that, especially that all these people that they lost to NJ uh, from uh, all these people that NJP NJPW lost, I think that they'll definitely try to refill that with people like Hideo Itami. Yeah, I could see him going back to Japan in some form or fashion. It's just a matter of where he'll land. So, um, I mean, we'll see. Yeah. He he honestly could go wherever he wanted. Honestly, I mean it's just yeah. it, like he let, he he got screwed by his injury. Mm. Like it's not like a matter of like just well it was bad booking after his injury, but it's like we know what he can do, and we we like we already know that he's got whatever he needs to 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 succeed, and he can just snap right back into it. It's just finding the right home for that. Yeah. Yeah. Totally. Like you know, in in Japan, you have. New Japan Pro Wrestling, which is, like, the biggest wrestling promotion right now in, in Japan and, like, also, you know, expanding abroad. Um, but then, like, you also have NOAA, which, you know, is where um, it, uh, Itami or, like, during that time when he was performing there, he was known as Kenta, uh, where he was, you know, basically developing on. But recently, NOAA has been getting a lot of attention, uh, like, especially with a lot of, like, J- Japanese pro wrestling fans. So I was actually thinking because, like, NOAA's getting more prom- – um, you know, getting more popular. I, I honestly was thinking that he might even like just try to jump back there, or 
somehow maybe do both New Japan Pro Wrestling and Noah. But, uh, I mean, times are going to definitely tell with that one, though. But I think it would be interesting to see him go back to Noah because I think that that would actually give that promotion a bigger boost uh, in their popularity. Yeah, it all depends too on like the relationship he has with those people. If he's like has any ties with the people in New Japan or even no in this case. So if he has good, you know, um, a good standing with those people, he could definitely work in either promotion. Yeah, definitely. So the last talking point for tonight. Uh, so with with Hideo leaving, with. Dean supposedly leaving um, with several reports of, you know, different superstars that were just unhappy with their contracts, like the Revival, for example. Um, like, does this really show that the WWE has just, like, wasted too much talent in a way here and just bad bookings? And just, like, in a way here, it's just, like, too many chefs in the kitchen, so to speak, that a lot of these wrestlers are just, you know, being, you know, not doing anything on the roster or being underused and... Uh, do you think that this could trigger a potential like, mass exodus or even like a lot more people to leave and actually like say like we want out and just like WWE to lose like a lot more, um, maybe not like a, you know, a, a large amount of talent, but like, you know, have like a, a nice chunk of talent leave. I think this has been well, an ongoing issue for several years now on WWE. I mean, look at, look at, uh, Dolph Ziggler is the perfect example of this. <laughs> Dolph Ziggler was, very unhappy with the contract. He was ready to leave. And they offered him this contract that was bigger than every other superstar except for John Cena just to keep him in contract. It's like, that shows you, like, the lengths that, that they're willing to go to try, well, to try and keep people in their contract and also the lengths other people are willing to go to, to get out of their contract as well. You have someone like Dolph Ziggler, who's the top guy that, that could go wherever he wants and, and make a killing in the Indies and WWE sees that potential and they don't want that happening. So what do they do? They offer him a shitload of money just to keep him there. And at, at first they didn't do anything with him. They were just like kind of holding him hostage with that money. And now they're finally bringing him back on with McIntyre and they like he's been doing a lot more stuff now than he was originally. But it's like, you see a lot of people get frustrated with their contract. Like, I see uh, Mike and Maria just asked for the release recently as well. That came out a few weeks ago, and there's so many other people, like, that are... Neville was a huge one. Neville, personally, he just waited his contract out, because that's how, how pissed off he was. Yeah, even like, uh, Austin Aries, too. Mm -hmm, Austin Aries, as well. Mm -hmm. People, they're just very unhappy with, with the way they're being treated there, and it, it it's it's kind of it's rough because you don't want to see people like that like you want like you have the potential to do so much with these people as well and it's just they're not doing the right things for for each people for their wrestlers and they're not doing the right thing for the fans and it's like it, it's hard to see someone like neville who could be a rising top superstar that they had and they just limited him so much and Austin Aries, they, they blew that one completely. Austin Aries is one of the best wrestlers around, and mm -hmm. they just treated him like shit. It's like, I don't know. It's just frustrating to see. Yeah, like a lot of those talents in 205 I Live, like even Aries in, in Aries' case, he they kind of pigeon-held that guy into submission, and he never got out of that 205 Live show, and they just kept him there, and... You know, you can understand his frustration and just getting out of there because they weren't doing anything with him. And I could see the same thing with even Hideo with just from going from NXT to 205 Live and just, that's it, not going anywhere else. So, I mean, there is frustration there and it's just like a lot of these guys get lost in the shuffle and it's like there's no, there's no storyline for them, there's no development, there's nothing there for them. So it's like... So they gotta ask for the release, and they gotta, you know, do what's best for them. Alright. Um, there he is. <laughs> we're, um, we're signaling. Well, I was gonna say. <laughs> I'm trying to get. I'm trying. I'm trying to get used to this. But um, uh, what was I was gonna say that. You know, the thing is that WWE is adding too many people 
to their roster. They need to have just a small amount because they don't... I don't know if they don't like competition. I don't know if they just want everybody, like, everyone... Like, you know, it's it's like a kid at a toy store. Oh, I want this. No, I want that. No, I want this. I want that. No, I want this. You know, I, I just don't think that, you know, it's a good environment for... A, you know, it, it's, it's pretty much, you know, um, inflating. You know, they're inflating their product so they can have a better product. But, you know, you know, the saying is, you know, if you have some if you have some too much, if you don't have if you don't do something in moderation, it usually hurts you, then benefits you like drinking water. If you drink, if you over drink water, you're going to overhydrate, you know, and I think that's what WWE is doing. They're over inflating their roster. And, you know, you know, and it's an unfortunate thing. Because, you know, these people are going to get left at the bottom because there's only one, there's only one person at the top and the, the road and the journey to that top is very narrow. And, you know, WWE wants everybody, but they can't provide everyone to be the guy or the girl, you know. Um, so, yeah, like. With what Dom said, it is frustrating to see. But again, you know, it is also a beneficial thing because when they go to WWE, this, you know, they become a household name, and that allows them to, you know, like I don't know if these wrestlers, you know, some of these wrestlers think of it as a, you know, as an internship. You know, when you go to an internship, I'm not saying that they need experience, but you know, it's you know, when someone goes to an internship, they have it for their resume. You know, so they they have it as a sub, you know, some of substance, so that when people look at it, you know, potential, uh, you know, employers look at it and say, oh, this is where you entered. I think maybe some wrestlers see that as a internship of some sort, even though they are skilled. It looks good for them, for a brand, to go to but WWE and they, they become a household name, and then they can they can negotiate their price. Whenever they go to like these smaller indie markets, there's also certain people that don't need to do that. Though. Like look at look at Bobby Roode. Bobby Roode was already like a top name. His whole AJ Styles as well, top name his whole career. Like coming to WWE, they they're not really gaining anything out of that besides like the actual like. I mean, yes, it is obviously more fame and more money and all that stuff, but it's like. When you have a top name like that compared to a, sm- a smaller, like no name, it's a hu- it's a completely different story. But do you see WWE signing all these other like top talents that they have like no room to to fill in fit in the roster? It's like it, they're just to me. It just feels like they're trying to hold hold people Whoa. away from from the Sorry. The, the competition. Mm-hmm. I uh, phone acting up. I, like the whole like the UK tournament, in my opinion, was just their way of monopolizing monopolizing the entire like UK indie wrestling scene. Mm. Like they saw all those people were getting really hot. And they're like, oh, well, we should get all these people. Well, let's start the UK brand. And then they didn't do anything with the UK brand for how they did the tournament, and they held like all those people in in lieu of competing mm-hmm. in the indie scenes for how long? Because they're like, oh, you could work with us in the future. Yeah. So like, be ready, but like, don't do anything crazy. Mm-hmm. So it's like they're they're holding all these people hostage. It's like, what's the point of having your big trophy case if you can't show off any any of the trophies that you have? Yeah. Yeah, definitely. I think it's just in a sense that they are just trying to hoard all the talent for themselves, and then you know, kind of like keep them in their contract so that other promotions can't get them. The thing, though, is that I think that that's starting to really backfire on them because now you're seeing a lot of wrestlers starting to become really unhappy and then starting to, like, fight back in a sense and then trying to get out of their contracts. So I think that, in a way, I think that WWE, like, you know, you can try to get as many of the superstars as you can, a lot of these top talents in your company, but you can't, keep them there for you know as long as you want or essentially just try to get all of the ones that you want um and then keep them there you know like for indefinitely and i think that now that they're really starting to see that but it's just in the sense that they need to um 
you know, that they really are going to experience a lot of wrestlers just leaving and you know there's like what did what do they need to do to uh to to combat this well i mean like um obviously if they keep um keep pulling in a lot of people then you know nothing's going to get any better and i think that what they need to do is they need to uh uh just stop trying to grab everybody that they can um but yeah i mean like the thing is that i don't think that they're really looking to try to make this any better i think that they are just trying to uh do stuff for their own you know greedy intentions yeah, I also think that um, I think they're also looking towards the future too. But even even so, they're still pigeon holding a lot of talent, and they're not utilizing them as fully as they need to be used. So I mean, it, it's a two sided coin at this point. But I mean, yeah. All right, all really great topics here. Really awesome discussion. So that is it for our episode of the That's Not the Finish podcast, and we will catch you next time.